Today we are reviewing the 2015 edition of the B-Class. Now Mercedes still a few years ago had hit a dead end in the, not only in India but globally. Their cars were not exciting enough, they were archaic and dated. The competitors had started, started taking jives at the fact that they were making cars for the daddies and the uncles of the world. The new B-Class in 2015 gets its first major facelift and we are going to look at what they have changed and whether it works or it doesn't work. The new B-Class gets a completely new redesigned front fascia. It has new headlamps, which are now completely LED. It has a new grille and a new air dam structure. But there are a few elements which are missing. The A-Class and the CLA sedan, for example, got diamond studs embedded onto the grille. This one doesn't get it. As such, it does make the car look a little less exciting compared to the other cars. In terms of dimensions, this is quite a big car. At 4.4 meters, it compares rather favorably well with some of the other crossovers like the Audi Q3 or the JLA crossover. The B-Class gets the same 2.2 liter turbocharged diesel engine. However, there's a small minor difference here. The engine has been tweaked to offer better power and torque figures than before. This engine is now specced at the same level as the CLA sedan and the GLA crossover. In effect, it makes 134 brake horsepower as against the 107 brake horsepower that it made earlier. Torque figures have also seen an uptick from 250 newton meters to 300 newton meters. In effect, this car has more grunt and more power to make the drive a little more exciting. Once you are behind the wheel, you can immediately feel that the 27 horses which are extra now, they don't really radically change the driving dynamics of the car. Yes, there is a little more grunt and a little more power, but it is not a jaw-dropping acceleration that you get. The stiffer suspension means it can handle corners really well and at the same time without compromising on the right quality. There are three mode options for driving in this car. You can choose either a sports mode which will stiff the suspension a little more and hold the revs a little longer. There is an economy mode which is basically for normal driving when you are trying to save a little bit on fuel and there is a manual mode where you can use the paddle shift. The transmission here is a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, which is not very bad for this car. This car is not meant to be a very performance-oriented, high-speed driving car. It is basically for cruising along on a nice Sunday afternoon or for going from office to work and back. Thanks to the high seating position of the car, you get a very good commanding view of the road, which I think a lot of people in India will like because you want to see what's coming ahead and you want to see a good view of the road. To that extent, B-Class is a very comfortable car to drive around. There isn't an awful lot that has changed inside the car. B-Class still has a well layout, neatly designed interior structure. The dashboard is neat and very well laid out. The aircon vents are turbine-like, like you see in the A-Class as well. Turn it around and it closes and opens. The big talking point would be the 7-inch screen that you see here. However, this is not a touch screen, which I think is a miss. You can still control it pretty well with the rotary knob here, which was the case before as well. It also has navigation maps, but you need to buy an accessory with Garmin maps preloaded on an SD card, which can be slotted in here. The steering wheel is also slightly new. There's a leather wrapping around and it's multifunctional. Instrument console is very well designed and laid out. Everything is on your face and you can find whatever you want at the back. The B-Class offers the best space in its segment and in front as well, thanks to these leather seats, you are pretty much comfortable. This isn't a very exciting design, but it does its job pretty well. One big reason why anybody should, should consider the B-Class over some of the other cars is the practicality it offers in terms of a large boot space. The luggage space of this car is a good 488 litres. You fold the seats forward and it has a 60-40 split seats and the space increases to over 1500 litres. The only problem though is a spare wheel which is stuck inside the boot. Not only does it damage the flat bed that a boot should have, it also eats into the boot space. There's a problem defining what this car is. You can call it a large hatch, you can call it a crossover if you want, or even some people may call it a van. It is not a very exciting looking car. Some of the other Mercedes cars like the CLA, the GLA or even the A-Class, they are much more stylish and much more exciting to look. The plus points of the car are many. It has a bigger engine now, or at least a better spec engine, 
which will give you more grunt, especially when cruising on the highways. It has a lot of space, a lot of features, seven airbags, including one for your knee. Five people can sit with reasonable levels of comfort and it has a large boot as well. But for all that practicality, as a luxury car, it doesn't give you that chutzpa that it should. For one of all the Mercedes cars that you see on India today, this one is probably the weakest of the lot. Happy driving.